welcome to the Murphy Code. Now, there is going to be an episode zero that's going to be coming out and we'll explain the backstory to this campaign and all that stuff. However, oh, there's a little bit I still need to edit on that, but that will be coming out on the YouTube channel because um, I, I can't really upload it to Twitch. But yeah, it'll be coming out and that'll cover the basics. But to bring you all up to speed, I have prepared a quick little audio segment for you. Welcome to the Sea of the Ninja. Just, sir. These crap jobs will help you gain the knowledge to best serve our glorious emblem and ensure you are members to the aid of the magical thoughts. But first, a history lesson. It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred centuries, the Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods, and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. A thousand are sacrificed daily, so that his soul may live on eternally. To die in this manner, brothers, is to die for the might of the Imperium! And the full context and full thing will be in session zero. But yes, we are doing Warhammer 40k, specifically Dark Heresy 2. There, this is a campaign set with the Inquisition. And we have our four players here. And then there is one little caveat I do have to mention. We're all brand new to this system, so there's going to be some little flubs, some little derps and stuff. I've never run a campaign, we've never played in this sort of campaign, so we might get things wrong, but what matters is we have fun along the way. With that said, it's time to introduce our team of... Uh, I think it's called Acolytes? Acolytes? Yeah, Acolytes. Acolytes, there, that's the, that's the way. <laughs> Language. Lang so yes, the first acolyte, acolyte, I'm, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, swear, is yes. Brad Limothy. Would you like to introduce your character? Becca. Hello, it's me again, Becca, <laughs> playing as Brad, who is... Used to was meant to be a police officer, but he dropped out of college, and now he's here. Don't expect him to live very long. So yeah, I mean it is forty k. Yeah. Next up, we have our resident doctor, Lily. Yeah. Yo 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 yo. yo. Uh, my name is Kira. And I'm going to be playing Lily, who uh, is a child who got shunted basically into the medical career. And uh, she's she's probably not supposed to be suturing people, but you know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't think about it too hard. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, she's she's dedicated, dedicating her life to, you know, the might of the Imperium. So, you know, it's perfectly fine. Next up, we have Kane. No last name. Kane was a, uh, he designed a lot of my, my prosthetic arms to help people who have been missing limbs in the past as a doctor. But instead, he changed his views afterwards whenever he uh, lost his arm to the assault, ironically enough. And now he is trying to pursue knowledge. Next up, we have Madame Louisia. <laughs> Yo, uh, Ninja here. I made a slightly older, not grandmother S, but definitely up there in her years. Uh, she 
basically has had uh, kind of like vision s powers since she was little. Um, so she's somewhat kind of like wears a veil over her face because her eyes are a little more different than usual. She's very isolated and kind of cold. Uh, but I guess we'll get to know more about her as time goes by. And then, finally up, last but not least, Owen, on up. Uh, hi everyone, me again, uh, Pete. So, uh, yeah, Owen here, if, uh, is it, if it isn't too obvious, well, obvious to tell, he's a, uh, member of the Ecclesiarchy. Very, very, very faithful to, uh, the God Emperor. A lot of that mostly came from, uh, his faith sort of being, uh, reinforced after the assault on, uh, Dirt. Yes, all of these people come from a small planet called Earth that was a bit of a social experiment. They left it to its own devices and, uh, you know, it was doing fine and, until the orcs invaded. And now they're being integrated as the last group of survivors. There's, there's about 20 or 30 that managed to survive the invasion. Oh, it's more than that, but from the, from the city that they all came from. And with that, it is now time for you guys to meet your Inquisitor. You briefly met her when you all were well brought on board. You've seen too much, and so you were brought into the Inquisition. Under Inquisitor Fox. And in fact, after completing your arduous training, which has taken quite a few years, you are brought into a meeting room with a fox and your Inquisitor. So you're the next group, huh? Hmm. Yes, I met an inquisitor. I met an inquisitor. Before you guys ask, no, this isn't this isn't me. I just this isn't me. It's just another character that has red hair and yes. uh huh. <laughs> you know what uh -huh. I mean? Sure. You know what I mean? Go on. You, you'll figure it out. So, I want to let you all know that your lives are meaningless. Let's, let's make that perfectly clear right off the bat. Hmm. You're probably going to die on your first mission, and if you manage to survive that, then maybe I'll learn your names. Does that sound fair? Yep. Only in death does duty end, as they say. Oh, well, this guy has the right idea. I like it. You get two points out of a thousand, I think it is. Anyway, so I'm giving you an interrogator to go along with you, you know, to show you the ropes and try and keep you alive. Because we do want more agents. It's just, well, the agents keep dying on me. Fortunately, I don't have that issue with my interrogators. And then she motions to the fox that has been sitting right next to you guys. You turn to look to the fox, and it smiles at you and says, Well, hey there. I'm interrogator fox. Number 27. Uh, at this point, I stop questioning things after the orc invasion. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so fluffy! <clears throat> yes, I am fluffy and dangerous. Uh, question, Madam Inquisitor. Yes? Uh, what form of Xenos is this? He just chuckles at you and heads out of the room. 
She's she's not going to answer any questions, is she? <laughs> no, that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> oh well, ignorance is bliss. So, are you ready to learn about your mission? Might as well get this over with. Okay, so we're going to be heading to a hive world. Well, a hive city to be specific. Do you know what a hive city is? I mean, you are hillbilly kick, so I suppose you wouldn't know about them. But a hive city is a big city. Okay, uh, can you do you, you do know what a city is, right? Yes. Okay, good. We got that much covered. Good, good. So, we're going to be going to the hive city. And then we're going to be taking care of some sort some, some form of mutant, I think it's called. Mm. But yes, your job on this planet, well, your test mission is to track down this mutant and, oh yes, kill it. Fair enough, plain and simple. Of course, we'll have to have you meet the captain who's going to be taking you to, to the to the city. Like, he's going to drop us off and, uh, yeah, a bit of advice. Don't mess with the captain. Like, he's literally um, the ship, so he could actually just straight up, you know, remove the oxygen and that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, we have reason to bother the captain. They're taking us over there. Oh, um... That's a good point, I suppose. Well, shall we head to the ship? Brad just nods. He knows he's probably going to die. <laughs> Ever, ever onward in the Emperor's name. So you're led by the fox through the ship, and you guys have been seeing these foxes around quite a lot. However, as you're walking, it's only now that you realize each one of them is probably an interrogator. And they all look exactly identical. So, are you guys, like, clones or something? Out of curiosity. That's one way to put it. We're actually a hive mind. Ah. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, there is, uh, what... Number one is the one that makes the rest of us, and the rest of us serve number one, who serves the Inquisitor. How many of you are there? I don't know. They tilt their head for a moment. I think the last one, the highest number I've seen is probably 623. Huh. He has begun considering how to gather together all of the little foxes to make a giant cuddle pile. <laughs> we do die quite often, you see. Here's your captain, and he, the fo fox motions towards this tall, imposing man that's about ten feet tall, and he's just staring at the fox disapprovingly, and he looks towards you all and says, <sighs> So you're the latest batch of Rick Fruits. Yes, sir. Just don't damage my ship and we won't have a problem. Understood, Emperor. sir. Emperor's mercy, he's as tall as an ogren. He motions towards the hangar bay where there's some seats and he steps onto a smaller shuttle. Like, 
it's not the massive ship that you guys have been training on but a smaller shuttle that's probably got a crew at of around 30 or so it's it's not a big ship in terms of 40k standards like it doesn't have an entire like colony living on Okay. So you're strapped in, and as you're strapped in, you see folks trying to get towards the cockpit. And the captain just straight up grab, picks the folks back into the hangar bay and closes the door. Ow. <laughs> it's light against the wall. <laughs> Puffy. They look towards uh Lily and then they go, ow, 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 my poor, it's it's so hurt, ow, ow. Lily immediately gets up and runs over to the quote unquote puppy. They fake a little limp as they air quotes hobble over to you. Lily is going to begin checking the puppy's wound. I require 50 cc's of petting. <gasps> Do that! Lily, like, immediately starts petting the puppy. Uh, she's a little forceful because she hasn't quite gotten used to how to pet animals properly, but she's given it her all. Despite your force, despite the amount of force you're using, they seem to enjoy it. Is this helping? Am I helping, Puffy? Yes. I will pet Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> you pet you pet them so much they start to become almost sort of like a pancake <laughs> with each pet. <laughs> <laughs> Lily eventually pulls back her hands, content with her work. <laughs> So, oh, she certainly is. Go ahead. The ship takes off and you guys start heading through space. You're free to explore the ship or talk to each other. But yes, this is the first time all of you have even, have properly met. Like you've seen each other around the ship, but this is the first time you've been brought together. How did a kid like her get a, get into this kind of mission anyway? <laughs> He's mentioning Lily in particular. <laughs> oh, she's a different. Oh, she's a different. Go ahead. Are you good? You sure? Yes. Right. Well, she's a devoted young soul, of course. That's how. Uh, doesn't feel right to me. So, you guys are sitting in the shuttle. Silence emanates. You see people walking to and fro. Like, there's no foxes on this ship except the one you guys brought in. In fact, you notice a few, quite a few of the crew giving the fox a grimace as they pass. Am I able to see why? Um, let's see. That would be a roll. So you want to bring up a sheet? And okay. I would say... You can either ask them about it, which would be inquiry, or you can try an awareness check to see if you can determine what it would be. I would prefer to use awareness. Okay, so you're going to look around and trying to see if you can find something that would clue you into why they dislike the fox. Yeah. 
So all you need to do is click where it says awareness. And this would probably be yeah, add, add plus 20. Yeah, I think Add plus like 20. a modifier plus 20? Yeah, because this wouldn't be a difficult check, but it wouldn't be easy either. Okay. Okay. So, you briefly get up and, you know, walk around the ship, and as you're walking, you begin to notice a few signs with the... Uh, with the fox on them and as you walk over to examine one you see when the inquisit when the interrogators are on the ship the fox must not one number one go in the cockpit number two scratch the walls number three scratch the furniture number four try to hotwire the the ship number five complain about being fed Number six, and on and on and on. Uh, wow. They're just a problem. So yes, you return to the others, and like I'm, I'm saying this was like a couple of steps away. Like it wasn't right where you were, but you were able to get up and examine. So yes. And Yes. Kane looks to the fox and then to the group shortly before going back to the fox. You're not very popular here, are you? What do you mean? I'm very popular. I'm fluffy. Only famous would be a better word, I guess. Oh, yes, I am pretty famous. Right. It depends on what that fame gives you, dear. You do realize you're talking to your boss here. Louisa just... Just stay silent and it just seems to be staring down at you. Doesn't seem like she really cares. You know, I Where's could... I could, for example, say order you to go down into the sewers to search for the mutant that we're tracking down. Wouldn't that be fun? You know what? I think I'm going to do that. Wouldn't be a first for me. Just grimaces. <laughs> now he understands everyone else's annoyance. <laughs> Let us well, know about our mission once we get there. Like, you all feel the ship. <laughs> Sorry. You all feel the ship rock slightly as you guys enter the gravity of the planet and come down to land. The captain briefly exits the cockpit to come over and say, so we're conducting several investigations on this planet and we're searching for things like heretics, mutants, and all that stuff like Zeno said. And one of the things that we found was a creature called a Sheila. We don't know where it's from, it's probably from the warp. Or probably some mix of something from the warp and a human. It's hard to tell. But your job is to track it down and get rid of it. A Shiva. Understood. Any clues as to what it looks like exactly? Well, it, it glances towards the interrogator. Do you know what it looks like? And the interrogator goes, I could tell them, but at the same time, I could not tell them. The captain just sighs and says, whatever, I'm, we'll, be, we'll be landing in 10 minutes. And he heads back into the cockpit and the door closes. So, what? So, while we land, do you want us yeah. to kill this mutant or not? 
Hmm. That is the question now, isn't it? Do I want you to kill us or do I want you to struggle to kill us? You know, maybe I want to test you all. Test your skills. See if you can actually track it down yourself. I mean, after oh. all, you say I'm quite popular. I might be I might be identified down there if I go there. I might cause them to not show up. A boss is supposed to ensure that their underlings are successful, are they not? Because it does go back to them if their underlings fail. He laughs at you. Oh no, but the puppy found a point. I remember, like, mom and dad weren't around all that often. They have, they have work stuff to do, and the puppy's pretty popular, and he seems busy, so he's probably got work stuff to do. The only thing, thing we know for sure is that that if this Sheila is hostile, then we must not suffer it to live. So then, risk our own lives. <sighs> Never mind. She just shrugs and then just goes quiet. There you go. That's the right attitude to have. The, the fox claps their paws together. It's very cute. So in general, the creature is said to have uh, a face filled with thousands of teeth, sparks along its back, and a tail. I take one of the teeth as a prize. Giant toothy monster. God. Yep. That's all we know about it. Sounds like a monstrosity for sure. Hopefully not something the shotgun can't handle. But yeah, you're going to go down there, you're going to try and find out where it was last sighted, and then we're going to go to where it was last sighted, and it's probably going to be in a sewer, so yeah, you're going to need to put some boots on. Mm -hmm. Over to Luis. Luis, who is wearing a dress, <laughs> but he says nothing. <laughs> Luisa is still a little like as if she cares. She's just standing there quietly. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, let's get this investigation underway. And you feel the ship rock. The captain opens the door again just to say that you, they've landed. And the door opens and you guys get your first glimpse of a hive scene. Yeah. Bigger than I expected. Even the full scale is still too large, but I had to make that at least visible. Yeah. But yeah, Owen just says, aye, isn't it glorious? A monument to, to, a monument to the will and strength of mankind. Ray, it's more color. Or their ego. It's not so full to it. That's the issue I have. So if you guys are going to go down to the lower regions, just be aware you'll need to get an oxygen mask. You can requisition one if you need to, but in general, just come back here if you need anything. And I think I'm going to just, you know, go find someone's window and scratch at the glass until they let me in. Mm. Bye bye, puppy. I wait before and I say, if you have anything you need to do, you've got combis, you can always just radio in, okay? Oh, like an oxygen mask. All right. Okay. Um, they turn towards the captain and say, oxygen masks, please. The captain 
reaches over towards a wall and pulls off an oxygen mask and hands it to you. Thank you. Gas mask, sorry, not oxygen mask. But uh, same thing, basically. You know what? Sorry. Uh, every does everyone get one, or...? You can get one if you want, or you can get one later, it's up to you. Later? I don't know if I'll need it or uh, not. Later. <laughs> I want one! Alright, you get one. You don't have to put them on, you can just carry them in your inventory. So, you all step out into the air, and it smells like New York. Yeah. Smells like home. Certainly is a bit suffocating, but is the the industry of, of all things. There's people walking about. The city is yours to explore. Now then, let's get to interrogating. After you. Owen seems almost strideful forward uh, with purpose at, as he gets to uh, questioning people at random about if they've seen anything of the sort that's like the Sheila or just mutants in general. Okay. Roll me. I think that would probably be interrogation. Yes. Um. We'll say a plus 10 because you're going to have some difficulty finding people who know exactly what you're looking for. Right. Uh, quick question. Interrogation works off of fellowship, correct? Yes? It can work off willpower or fellowship. You need to click the drop down menu and change it to that. All right, yeah. Gotcha. So we are going interrogation with a modify era plus 10, yes? Yep. Ouch. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing, though? I haven't, I don't see his role. Yeah, um, I noticed that. Uh, his roles must be set to whisper. I'll fix that up, but um, it is it's a failure with three degrees, so he very much failed badly. So you question the citizens, and as you're questioning them, you notice that they're being rather cagey. So you try to pressure one for information, and then one of the local enforcers walks out and starts striding towards you. They pull up their pants and go, okay, so we've been having some complaints about a group of people going around questioning civilians. Will that be you too, you guys? Cor correction, I am the one who's questioning. Mm-hmm. Look, sir, we're just looking for any signs of a mutant so we can get rid of it. Yes, well, I'm gonna have to ask you to not interrogate the civilians. It's seen as obstruction of the citizens. I'm also going to need to see some form of identification. Well, we do have a form of identification. Uh, where's that block? Where's foe? Uh, he Owen starts looking around to see if he can see our uh, interrogator that came with us. Yeah, the fox is gone. Figures. We, we work for Inquis Inquisitor, Inquisitor Rex. Inquisitor who? 
Inquisitor Rex. Rex? You mean Fox? Sorry, Fox, yeah. Oh, so that was my head at. Um, the guard looks to you and he sort of pauses for a moment and then goes, Oh, oh an Inquisitor. Um, and I need you to roll me, uh, You can either roll Command or Intimidate or Charm, either one of those. Uh, I will go with uh, Command. Okay. Um, before you roll, uh, let me see if I can figure out why. Oh, I think I found why. There's a button on the uh, character sheet that's just GM. Ah, uh, that that would be that must be it. Try it now. But yeah, um, uh, no I'll give you modifier. I'll give you another plus ten, I think. No, righty tidy. Okay, okay. So you I still don't see it. You don't? <sighs> no. No, me neither. Okay, well. Yep. I'll I'll fix that up, but um, let me just uh, there's the roles there for everyone else, so you can see them here. And uh, as for the rest of you, he succeeded with two degrees. So what's so basically he succeeded, and the officer goes, "Oh, you're with the... oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." And you you guys realize that he's suddenly really scared of you all and he goes oh I, I i i'm so sorry i didn't realize this was official inquisitorial business um forgive i'm really sorry about that uh well how can we help you what are you looking for in specifics well uh, uh, kind of you to offer yes yes anything to help the inquisition right we're looking for Something called a Sheila. Oh, you're after that mutant that's been killing uh, citizens. We haven't really gotten to it because it's you know it's it's a, it's in the under under city area where you know the gangs and that live. So we haven't really gotten around to it because then we have to get it. We have to requisition those relevant forms to allow us to conduct a raid into a certain gang that occupies the area where I was last seen and then we have to then also requisition the forms to allow us to go into the sewer system that is in that area but you guys don't have to go through all that all those legal loops which are the inquisition uh, this this uh, solves a lot of issues yes ah yes good old ministerium yes we would be nothing if without it so yes he uh, he pulls up this large 3D map of the Hive City, and he he has a data slate that he has it on, and you can basically you know interact with it, zoom in, zoom out, you know, but it's in 3D, and he brings your attention towards an area of the city, and I'm going to circle it for you, and he says. Okay, so it was last seen in that general area. Now we don't know where it is specifically. All right then. <laughs> he gives you a salute, and um, I I I, tr I trust this will. Um, again, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you guys were the position. Uh, please don't exterminate us. Okay. Hardly a reason to go exterminatus yet. After all, you're not infested with heretics yet. Of course not. Of course not. He lets out a relieved breath and then says, Well, I'll leave you to your investigation. And uh, he then walks over towards one of the citizens that has been, you know, just quietly watching you guys. But not really watching, watching, but more just. They had their eye on you because you've been asking around people. And they go over and whack that citizen on the head and, say, and says, What were you thinking? They're inquisitors! And they get into an argument. 
We should leave them be. And I. We got a mutant to hunt. But since since it seems like it hangs out in the Undercity, seems as though though uh, you two made the right choices in getting getting those masks. Maybe be prudent for the rest of us to get a couple. All right. So, yeah, it's a, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so you all get a gas bomb. Okay. I'll probably put that into gear. <laughs> I have a rebreather. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, a rebreather is similar to a gas bomb. I think. Or maybe it's for the water. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that, but. For now, we'll say for now we'll say it is, but I'll double check that. I think that one's shape as well, by the way. Thank you. But yes, okay, Louise, Louise just basically takes out her own breather out of her uh, her her own pack and then just puts it on silently. Ah, dear sister is prepared. Wonderful. She glances over to you. At least it seems like she does. You can barely see a little bit of like uh, a blue S color underneath the the veil she's wearing. As she just sighs, as she goes, "Please do not call me that." Why not? Aren't we all? Aren't we all brother and sisters of, of the Imperium? Her her lips, which actually has some of what looks like uh, skull tattoos on the sides. Uh, the corners of her, where her lip meet, uh, seems she kind of frowns a little bit, but she doesn't uh, vague you with an answer, yes or no. Brad also has no comment. Technically, we're not. You guys all have way different genetics. There's no way that we could get people with this many eye colors and this many hair colors from the same parents. It. It's a figure of speech, dear girl. What I mean, I mean is we all, all serve under the Emperor's will. Um, and then she turns again, look a little, almost like as if she's about to get you. More willing than others. Regardless, you can just call me Louisa. Very well, Valencia Louisa. I I am Owen of the Ecclesiarchy. What about you? Well, nod and acknowledgement. What about you, nephew? Have you been doing your own investigation? What have you been up to? Okay, went to make sure the group's in the ice side, and he would just be actually watching, looking around. That's okay. Um, uh, you can roll me, we'll say, an awareness check then. Alrighty. Any modifiers in this, or no? Mm -hmm. mm, plus 20. You're just having a look around, so, yeah. Now, I do have a check mark in awareness. Does that matter for this or no? Does it... it adds it automatically. Okay. See, your modifier is plus 20. God damn, my boy. So, yeah, it, uh, the check mark basically makes it added automatically, and that's for when you've got it. But uh, depending on how difficult the check is, I'll add. I'll add Basically, um, the, if I add to a modifier, that's basically making the DC lower to put it in D and D terms. Got it. I get it. So um, you look around. You're, you know, checking out the uh, the officer who's currently like radioing in to let the rest of the force know that an inquisitor is in the area and to keep keep a watch out on for these people because they're just doing inquisitorial business 
you know, he's basically saying, look, they're just with the Inquisition. They're not going to do anything with them. And as he's doing that, you notice that there's a figure covered in thick tattoos down one arm. Like, it almost looks like a snake is trying to swallow his arm from the tattoo. And he's got no hair, but these very, very dark sunglasses on. And he's wearing a tank top and, you know, just some boxes. And he's got his arms folded, you know, he's leaning against the wall and watching this police officer as they quite, quite audibly explain that the Inquisition is here. And then you notice him sort of grimace a bit and then walk away, walk down an alley. Almost like a, like a uh, mechanical whirling came from him, and then he just kind of starts walking towards the alley. Okay. Glancing to the other shortly after, and as if like making a motion to follow. Hmm. What you got something? Depends, but right now we're about to be discovered pretty easily. Hmm. We're looking for a mutant. You know that, right? I also know the mutant with the gang, probably, if it's on any other dark ride. That's all. Ah, that's always how this goes. It's never just one, it's always a ga gang of heretics. Well, speaking in Euro terms, then, heretics are always in numbers, They're never singled out. And then Kane starts walking in. So you walk into the alley. Do the rest of you guys follow? Yep. I feel like this is a really bad idea. All right. You guys walk into the alley and you see the guy turning at the end of the alley. And you begin to follow him. Now, are you trying to do this stealthily, or are you just openly letting him know that you're full? Are you trying to be discreet? I'll try to be discreet, discreet about it. Alright. Then I want you all to roll me a stealth check um, with a plus 20. And stealth is down in the operate section if you scroll down. Here we go. With a plus what? You got you did a robot on me a little bit. Plus twenty. Okay. And that's for everyone to roll. Yes. Okay. Oof. <laughs> Boy. So. Um, let's see. So, Lily and Kane both managed to, you know, keep their footsteps low and not make too much noise. However, Brad kicks a can accidentally into Louisa, who sort of stumbles on it, and there's a loud thunk as she has to lean against the wall to stop herself from falling over. Can I uh, do a little bit for this? Sure. That's okay. I would like Kane to be able to use the arm to tr like to kind of like jump up and kind of cling on the wall a little bit with it. Is that all right? Or no? So you like want to try and cling on to the wall. Yeah, um, that's a method of hiding in the alley, unless they look up. I use the noise as a muffler. Okay, um, that would probably be acrobatics. Okay. But you, it's not really something you can practice for, so I'd say uh, no modifier for this. Okay. Like, it, you're not 
you're not a someone who was performing yeah. in a circus, so. Okay. The guy asked. So you can roll acrobatics, it just won't be with Oh, did you just roll it? Yeah, you did. Yeah. So yeah. you try to jump up and you reach for something to help lift you up, and as you grab it, it snaps off and you fall to the ground with a with a thud. Okay. The gang the man with the snake tattoo turns and looks and stares at you all and then he just sort of grimaces again and then says hey what can i help you with please it always she just pokes her head out and goes i like your arm thingy is this a snake yes how'd you get it Painfully. I want one. So yes, the guy is now aware of your presence and he's looking at you all. What do you do? Well, no, no need to hide anymore, it seems. Lisa gives a bit of a huff, uh, sounding very annoyed as she uh, corrects herself, standing back up and dusts off her uh, her dress a bit. No, no need to be so fe fearful, my fr friend. Come over here. We've got, got a few questions we'd like to ask. The man reaches into his pocket and shows that he's got a gun on him before putting, slapping me back in and folding his arms and saying, you yeah, know, I'm not doing that. What do you want? Did you just threaten him? What's the cane? He's got a gun. And he just threatened us. I think it's more like he's scared about something. What did you guys do? Oh, and correct. You sound like a loud mouth of sorts. I'll allow you to deal with this. I'll just follow your lead. Very well, then. I wouldn't do does step forward, his hands out, his uh, wrapped up hands out, out to show that he's not reaching for any kind of weapon that he has on him. He says, look, look, my friend, there's no need for to be so worried. You don't give us a reason to, to do anything and we won't do anything to you in turn. As I said, all we have is just, just we want to ask a few questions. You say that, but you were you stalking me. Hello? I'm getting a lot of robots. Okay. Well, my connection is completely green, so I, I think it's your net. Well, you say that, but my connection is completely green, too, so I just know what's going on, so I refresh. Yeah. Everyone's coming in clear on my end. All right. Go ahead. Well, anyway. I want the... Well, you... Well, you slink off so so suspiciously. What are we supposed to think? He just stares at you and goes, "I left after leaning against a wall. How is that suspicious?" Well, you see, well, from my understanding, actually, no, Kane wouldn't have told him that. Looks to Kane. This was your idea, bud. Very well. Kane steps forward a bit. Okay. In front of Owen. I'm the one that's, well, that spotted you, so I guess I'll start talking instead, since you're willing to comply for that much. I understand that 
you might be a, I'm assuming from based off your tattoo and markings that you might have been to the Undercity for a little bit. Am I correct to assume that? What, 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 uh, hold on, sorry. What gave that away? He just sort of responds sarcastically. I wouldn't, if we wouldn't be so sure we're not from the city. We'd like a little bit of an inside help if we can get that. And that's why I followed you. Trying to help people save lives here. I'm not here to take them. You don't. You inquisitive types don't fool me. I know what you're really here for. Didn't do it for me because I do not know otherwise. You just want to take out our gang. Make us all suffer. Take our bitches. It's a lot of hate in your town. I'm used to that. His arm then kind of slams onto the to the ground in front of him for a little bit. I lost in the precious vine too. I'm not too sure about your life. I'm not gonna ask for it. Just want to ask for a little bit of insight, or at least keep our name discreet as much as we can for a while. We're not here to take out your gang. We're here to take out one person. Yep. It's a bit late to beat the speech. Your you, your friend there, the the officer, officer beats a lot. The man spits on the ground. He, he just told the entire Ive City, didn't he? Bit late for that. I guess you're right on that, isn't it? He makes a small smile to that. Then I guess it will work quickly, won't we? Alright. I want you to roll me um, a charm check, Niku. Uh, no modifier. Okay, success. Uh, the man passes his lip and then just goes, Fine, I won't tell the boys that you're here, but they're gonna find out. I, I can't understand a word, I'm sorry. Fine, I won't tell the gang that you're here. Yeah, he said he won't tell the gang, but they will eventually find out. Okay. Fair enough. Then best be careful not to come after us, because we are tracing a mutant. Even unless you want to assist us with, the, with the dealing with it, then perhaps best to stall or not follow us as long as possible. Hmm? You go on into gang territory, they're gonna shoot at you. You don't just walk into a gang's territory. That's like saying, hey, shoot me. Wow. We do as we please to stamp out, out the mutant influence. This is why I don't like you inquisitive times. The man spits on the ground again. We asked enough already, guys. I think we can move on. We know where we need to go. As long as we can play long enough, I'm, I'm happy with the result we got here. All right. Let's move out. Keep on living, young man. He just sort of waves his arms in a very annoyed motion and just starts walking once more. Yeah, I'll do that. Just do that before you get here. I don't need your permission. And he, he walks I just roll his eyes. <laughs> yeah. You guys are in an alleyway. 
We have that map, right? Um, do one of you, you have a day of slate? I do. Did you download the map? I did not. So no, you don't. Okay. Let's backtrack a little bit. figure out our positioning at the moment. Lily needs some math. Lily needs to put on a bunch of games onto her fancy iPad. Make sure to always bring a map. What do you guys want to do now? Uh, Brad is going to head directly to the site. Yep. Okay. Same. So, it is a high city, so you're going to need to roll maybe some sort of navigation. Hello? Hello. Hello. Let me see if I can. Maybe making an awareness check? No, I was trying to figure out how to solve Necker's issue, but I don't have the issue, so I can't really solve it on my end. Um, Maybe swap the server? There's a navigate. Yeah, navigate. You see the section that says navigate and then surface? That's the check you want. So since you guys don't have a map, you're not going to get a bonus. You did briefly see it, so uh, I'll give you a, maybe a plus five because it is a hive city. Right, okay. So anyone who wants to can roll that. Yeah, uh, I heard the word navigate and I heard the word surface, so I think that's all I just did. We are really bad with directions. <laughs> uh, Luis? I'm still figuring this out, sorry. There we go. We are really bad at directions. <laughs> um, let me see about the settings. Oh. US Central. Alright, you guys are going to get kicked for just a second. Don't worry about it. Is that better? Hello. Uh, don't know yet. Okay, well that's the best I can do. Anyway, so you all got, you all are now very lost. <laughs> You have no idea where you are. <sighs> okay, admittedly, I'm starting to see what, why, uh, yeah, you considered everything just kind of lifeless. It's It makes it a little hard to find a way. All right. Brad is going to look around for any kind of map some kind of info, info, info thing, a sign, anything. <laughs> we've only got we've only got a little while left, Denko. I know I know it's difficult, but you you can always just rewatch what you missed. 
fit. Yeah, it's I, definitely on your. I get. I don't know if I can even hear a roll. I can't hear the setting. It's gonna be really hard for me. Like it is like a uh, at uh, uh, roll. I try try restarting your browser then. Okay. All right. Well, well, Matthew's doing that. I'm sorry about that, Becca. Would you repeat yourself? Okay. Brad is going to look around for any signs or info maps, anything of the sort with directions. All right. Uh, you can roll another navigate check, but this one's going to be minus 10. Ooh, okay. Because you were lost. Uh, minus 10. Okay. Wow, I'm bad at this. <laughs> I am doing the modifiers for that one. Eight. No modifier of five. And this is how it's three, two. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just making sure I was doing that right. Um, so yeah, this, there is indeed a sign, and it does indeed list places and things, but you have no idea what those places and things are. <sighs> Alright, so, uh, does there look like a police officer, or at least a, some guy in charge nearby? Alright, um... That would probably be some sort of perception check. So, awareness. Oh. Alright. Awareness. Do I get any modifiers? Because uh, we talked to that guy previously who actually, so I could identify his uniform. Actually, no. Awareness is more for looking, looking around and awareness. So it would be actually just be straight perception. So you just do a perception. Okay. Um, but no, because you guys are lost. In fact, it would be more accurate to say I should give you a minus 10 to it. Okay, so I'll just roll that again. No, it's fine. Um, still got it. I was just saying that I should probably do it, not that I was yet. So, you look around a bit, and... You don't see a police officer, but you do see someone giving a car a parking ticket. Uh, Owen just walks up to him and taps his shoulders. He looks over at you. Do you happen to have a map on you? Uh, yes, I do. What do you need it for? Wonderful. Just a moment. Little girl! Hello! Come over here, please. Hello! Blair runs over. Ah, uh, I see. You need a map of the city. And he brings out his data slate, taps on it a bit, and then, you know the Bluetooth symbol? It basically hovers in the air and he offers it and... He's had the two data slays together, there's a downloading action, and then bloop, you now have the map in your slate. Many thanks. You, you've helped a gr great deal. He nods and says, all right, remember to park your cars in the designated zones. And he goes back to writing the park ticket. We now then. You don't even have a car. <laughs> All the more reason for him not, not to give us a ticket. Hmm. Now then, Lily, uh, uh, little girl, if you'd be so kind. Yeah. Lily pulls out her uh, her slate, shows it to everybody. All right. So you're going to need to do another navigate service check. But Lily, you get a plus 10 to it. Because you have the map. You can always give it to another person, but only one person can have the plus 10. And the reason it's only a plus 10 is because it's a hive city and you're on foot. 
Oh, jeez. So we're all just so we're all just rolling uh navigate surface again. Yep. All right. Wow, we really suck at this. <laughs> Lily cannot read maps. She can do surgery, but she cannot read maps. <laughs> Crippling over specialization. Um, who we will see? Uh, Kane, who is no longer here. Yes, yes. I, sorry, I only saw the three roles, so I was like, hold on, is there someone missing? No, I, I know Nick is not here. Um, so, you guys follow the map, carefully doing your best to follow it, and Louisa, being the one that rolled with the least amount of failure, you realize you passed the ship dock that you guys arrived at three times now. Uh, Louisa oh, notices, stops place. for a second, and she goes, one second, we're going in a circle. Oh, no, I got this. I'm following the map. She walks over to Lily and reaches out to, like, slightly pat her head. Skin definitely a lot more different than everybody else's. And she goes, I'm sorry, dear, but unfortunately we are going in a circle. Oh. But I did all we really are bad with directions, right? aren't we? Man-made cities can be hard to travel through if we're not if you're not local. Owen is just sort of off to the side, mumbling to himself. The emperor will rewards patience. The emperor will rewards patience. Does someone else want to take the map then? What are you guys gonna do? Eh. Alright, so no, no, I'm still learning how this works. Who has the highest intelligence? Or perception. <laughs> I have a thirty I mean... perception. Let me put it like this. Okay. Pretend it's DMD. What would you do if you were lost? We just Maybe. did, and we all failed on it. Yeah, so what are you going to do now? Yeah, we need a guide. We desperately need a guide. <laughs> Alright, well, you're back of the ship, and you do have your radio on you. No, you can't leave. So do we call Fox then? No, never mind. They don't have one. Never mind. I'm like, like, what were you? I have an call? idea. <laughs> they do have. They do have one. That's why they said you could. You could always reach them on the, on the combat. The combat is basically the, like a smaller airport. But put it simply. Like yeah, they folks can be reached is what I'm saying. If that's what the route you want to. You had a plan, Becca? I, yeah, I have a plan. He's Brad is going to pick up the radio. Okay. He turns it on and goes, This is ground team. We're in need of assistance in navigation. Over. Yeah. 
you uh, get two replies. The first is from the captain of the ship who goes, what sort of navigation do you need? And the second is from Fox who says, oh, did you get lost? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. We're gonna need a bird's eye view of the area. We have a set destination, but yes, we are lost. Over. <laughs> a bird's eye view won't help you with hive or hive city. I'll be right over. I'll help you all out. And oh, Fox then goes, oh, over. Roger that. So, about five minutes later, there's a crash from a, a window breaking, the sound of uh, dog barking, and then Fox walks out and ritual. Alright. So, what are you trying to get to? I imagine you found some information out there. Lily, the map, please. Lily brings out the the pad again. Oops. Where are you taking us to the right place? Folks looks to it and then nods and then says, "Ah, oh, yes, we'll need to requisition a video, uh, vehicle for that then." And, uh, they reach for the radio and then they go, Alright, turn it to this frequency. Um, attention officers, can we please reposition? And there's a discussion that happens, and then you will, hey, we're going. Um, has that fixed it? Uh, sounds like it. Okay. So, all you've missed is they got lost. And now they've gone to um, your interrogator, Fox, to get some help. Okay. So, the, a discussion briefly happens, and then Fox puts their radio back in their fur. Like it just sort of sinks into it rather creepily. And then they smile and say, Good news, I have purchased us the vehicle. All right. A moment later, this rusted van with one window smashed and one of the back doors hanging ajar right, drives over and is parked. Um, the back doesn't have any additional seats. It's only got the two from two. Folks, so she's to it and then says, Yeah, this should be able to work as cover so they won't know you're coming. <sighs> so, who's riding in the boot? Oh, we'll get in the back or not. King, King, <laughs> so, you all pile into the car and walk stops in the front and they briefly they're in the driver's seat but then they move to the center and they motion their forward towards one of their devices and says this has built-in navigation. You just have to follow the instructions there on the road and it'll take you right there. All right. I guess I can drive. Wonderful, I because drive. I certainly can't. So, this time it'll be a singular navigation check, but you get a plus 30. Because you got the GPS and the nav and the navigation. Okay. There we go. Wait. 
That's still a failure. Really? Yeah. It, it, you, it's not a big, it's not a big failure, so there's not any big penalty, but you did still fail the check. So you guys are following the navigational tool. However, you run into some roadworks, and you have to try and make a detour. So you make that detour, and that throws the map off, and then you have to put in the location again. And then you run into another bit of a detour, because there's more roadworks in the detour you were using to get around the roadworks. And by the time you manage to get to that part of the city, it's now night. You know, Lala, I think you may have cursed this game by calling it the Murphy Code. <laughs> yeah. Everything wrong, everything that could go wrong is going wrong. <laughs> Oh, yes, you have made it to the area. Like, you're driving in a middle city area at the moment. Like, you can get down to the lower city, but most of the roads are in the upper city where it's, you know, not covered in toxic smog. But yes, you have made it to that area of the city that was indicated to you. It is now night time, so bear that in mind for any checks you make to proceed, please. Well, it took, took the entire day, but we're finally here. Shall we start investigating? So, Falks speaks up and because Falks came with you guys and goes, Wait, where are we going to park? Hmm. Is there that... some kind of park and parking I'm... area somewhere? I need you to make one more navigate check with a plus 20. Oh my god. Uh... Uh... <laughs> you drive around for an hour. As a reminder, you guys haven't eaten all day, by the way. And you can't find a single open parking spot. You try to find somewhere, like you look around, you're looking, and then you think you see someone, and you go to drive in and get it, but then someone with a moped comes in and <laughs> takes the spot before you. Do you keep looking? At this point, Brad is a little bit infuriated. <laughs> and he just goes, just screw it. <laughs> and finds any kind of parking space, even if it's going to be. Uh... Are we just park on a curb or something? Yes. <laughs> so you managed to find a bit of the row that's basically a driveway and there's a bit there that says do not obstruct in uh you know bright red 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 letters but you drive in there and you park and you turn off the engine let's just get this over with quick <laughs> <sighs> Corpse starch really sounds about nice right about now. Oh, I think the... still think the city is great. Dark and I'm tired. I'm hungry. I want to shoot stuff now. Yeah, great. Let's get some. Let's finish the job and get some food. All right. Say we well... do the food first here. Not exactly uh, a good idea for us to go in to a dangerous situation without being fully prepared. Uh, Owen just looks to um, folks and says, can we requisition food before we get this done? What? Folks looks to you all and says, well, all right, let's get some takeout. So 
you will head to the nearest little fast food joint and you know it turns out to be this sort of chinese style food that has eyes in it but it's you know it's quite good you know the eyes are quite juicy At this point, Brad. At this point, Brad just doesn't care anymore. <laughs> Billy takes a bite out of one eye, kind of like grimaces at the squish, and slowly eats everything else and starts piling her eyes onto other people's plates. They taste like marshmallows. Ah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> she starts doing. She starts doing the forty k chubby bunny challenge. He does the exact yeah. opposite and tries stealing other people's eyeballs. There you go. But yeah, you guys eat, and as you're eating, you feel thoughts in on what you've discovered, and they say, So, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get down there, mainly because they tend to shoot on sight, but we could always take one of the uh, sewer entrances in the upper city and make our way down there. Hmm. It would be a bit more of a trip, but it would be it would say, a lot safer. Well, we've already co covered about one one six billionth of this city. What's another? What's another one six billionth? So you want to go the safer route? Honestly, at this point, well, my personal personal opinion is yes, we should. We are going into a dangerous situation, so might as well take what we can for the safe route. Fine. Not not in All right. Well, in that case, I suppose, do you want to start it in the morning, or do you want to just go right now? You can go right now, it won't be the eyes. Sleepy. Let's get let's get the investigation finished up, then we can figure out what to do in do in the next morning. Just be aware that this is going to give you a bit of fatigue. Because you're going you've you've been driving all day and now you're continuing on so if you do continue on you're going to get one point of fatigue okay we'll just take a rest fair enough all right she uh looks smiles at you and says all right well let's sleep in the car then hmm. i mean unless you want to try and make all our way all the way back to the ship no. Yeah, I've slept on worse. Box curls up in, uh, you know, the little glove box area that goes between the front seats? Yeah. Yeah, box curls up in that, and you'll get a very, very uncomfortable night's sleep. Louisa doesn't sleep for a good majority of the night. She's pretty much almost awake for the whole, almost the whole night. You all wake with bad pains in stiff joints to the sound of something being slapped onto the front window of your car. It's a parking. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> There's a second slap. As another parking ticket is placed on your car. It's time for sleeping in your car. I hate this place. <laughs> uh, the Inquisition will, will pay for it, I'm sure. Sorry. You're 
head towards the nearest entrance to the sewers and folks does some talking and you're all given these hazmat looking suits that cover you up completely but don't cover up enough that you're never going to completely get rid of the smell like they cover you up but they also still have the smell from the last times they were used and they assure you they've been clean sacrifices we do I smelled worse when they were training me Folks gives a bit of a wave and then says all right well good luck in there I'll wait for you all here okay now we get this out of the way <laughs> and once again you're handed a map. God damn it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, right. I have to take that. Lily, like, pulls out her thing again. So, a thick and heavy vault like door is slowly opened with a mechanism. And as it's opened, the smell of what's set. It smells like the place has never been cleaned inside in a hundred centuries. God, I mean, <laughs> oh, that smells like shit. Yeah, well, most of it is, dear. Good luck in there. The Emperor tests us in strange ways. You're, you're given gas masks because you are going down into the lower levels, but even then, it's still it's a tip. <sighs> and you step in, and as you step into the water, you see eyes glinting, and then there's little <laughs> as small creatures skitter away, and they say, and the person on guard duty pulls out and says, Oh, don't worry about those things. You just need to worry about for the ones that fight back, eh? And if you want to kill some mutants on your path, go for it. No, I right. just, I just kind of silently pulls out his stub revolver. The door begins to close behind you, and then it shuts. The shotgun. <laughs> You guys do have tor <coughs> torches and the light. So, you know, yeah, you can't I see. Called, I have something called low sticks? That's that's cigarettes. Uh, it's cigarettes. Oh, okay. I, 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 of course, do have a glow, a glow globe, which projects light in a 12 meter radius, and it lasts for five hours. So, yes, you guys do have light. Yeah. Louisa looks over to you and she kind of pulls up on her own as well as like a silent uh, recognition that she too has one and can operate once yours runs out, depending on how long we're down here. All right. So now it's time for another navigation check. Uh, <laughs> all right. Also, just be aware, navigation can use intelligence or perception. In case you didn't realize that. Now, you have a map. It's not a hive, it's not as difficult as the hive city. So I will give you a plus 20. And you all may roll it. Finally! <laughs> So, you guys managed to navigate fine at first, then Lily trips, and their day's sleep falls into the muck. 
No. And their hair becomes absolutely drenched in things that when you were getting when uh, things that you were born will probably require shots for. Uh -huh. So Lily, you are now filthy and your data slate is covered in filth. And you can't really see the map of the But <laughs> you did manage to make it to the lower levels. And you're not entirely sure where the exit is, but you all may roll a navigation check with a plus 10. And if one of you gets a success, you will be able to find your way. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Owen, I'm afraid to say you also fall in. And you unfortunately fall into a bit that burns a bit like acid. Ah. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Louisa, you managed to keep them on track and you all find the next entrance. This one has been left open. And you guys have the gas masks on. But yes, the entrance to the sewers and the lower pipe has been left open. So you're able to walk out. And it, it's not fresh air because you guys have to wear the mask, but it's not the sewer air. So it's a slight improvement. There we are. Despite a few fumbles, how's everyone else? How's everybody doing? <laughs> I, I, quite frankly, I, I'm ready to start, start smashing someone's head in. Fortunately for you, there seem to be some guards. They turn and look at, they, they seem to be there just mostly to take care and, and persuade any mutants. And as you guys exit, half your party covered in mud. They pause a bit and go, Hey, uh, don't some of those mutants look a bit human? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. Nah, they're probably just mutants like the others. And they aim their guns and prepare to fight. We're not... Uh... What, what, what? We're, in qui We're here on inquisitorial duty. And that is where we will end the session. Oh my god. <laughs> so, what do you guys think of... 40k. Uh, I feel as though I am living the 40k experience. Yep. <laughs> Is, are you guys having fun? Yeah, even though we're failing miserably, I'm having fun. <laughs> um, favorite moment? I don't think I have one just yet because I'm still figuring this out. Ox pancake. Okay. All right. Well, then with that, we will wrap this session up here and we'll see you all next week. Bye bye. Goodbye. See ya. Bye. Bye.